Hello, welcome. My name is Luke from The Faction, and today I have the pleasure of talking to Tommy of North Carolina's Prog Legends Between the Buried and Me. How are you going, Tommy? I'm good. Very good. How are you? You're not too bad at all. Um, now, the reason behind our interview today is that you've announced that you're returning to Australia in February of 2020. How excited are you to return to Australia? We are. We're very excited. Yeah. Uh, it's been a few years now. I'm, I'm bad about time, but I believe it's been a few years. Um, but yeah, Australia's always been a really good place for us. And um, I don't know, we, we just recently did some evening list shows in Europe a few months ago. And every night it was like a really special vibe in the room. So we're excited to kind of br bring that uh, same thing over to you guys. Yeah, and you guys are playing the three major cities, Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. Uh, which of these are your favorite to play? Yep. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, the the thing for me is, especially quick trips like this, is we probably won't have a whole lot of time to, you know, explore. Um, but as far as shows, it, it sometimes it differs, man. It, you know, some nights the unexpected places will be the best. So I, I don't have any expectations, hopefully. Um, I'll be surprised with how, how um, the energy is in the room. Yeah, and when did the idea to organize this run of intimate shows come around? Um, I guess earlier this year. You know, it was one of those things we've kind of always talked about. Um, but we were very always a lot of hesitation, just physically more than anything. Uh, we, we were just worried that we couldn't, you know, get through it or. or there would be a demand enough for people just to want to see us. Um, but we kind of just went for it uh, with the Europe and we, uh, you know, approved that tour and this tour quite, quite a while ago. And um, even going into that tour, we're like, man, I hope we can do this still because we have lots of dates booked, <laughs> but um, it went great, you know, and, and physically we did fine. Um, we, we surprised ourselves, I think. And, you know, I was real proud of the sets we, we put together and just the, the nights in general felt like something different than, you know, the normal show. So, uh, I'm glad we're doing more of it. Um, it's, it's not something I, uh, I'm nervous about anymore, but you know, initially I was, there was some hesitation and kind of some fear involved in the set length and just the material. So, but it's, yeah, everything came along great. Yeah. And did you play two sets back to back over in Europe as well? Or is Australia the first time you're playing the two sets? Yeah. Back -back? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah we did in Europe. We did uh, um, the two sets, you know, a little over two hours. So yeah. Oh sweet. And so, how does that work? Is that like a continuation with a break in between, or are they two separate sets from each other? Um, we did two separate sets with like a fifteen minute intermission, kind of between the two, just to kind of have everybody gets a little refresh, including the crowd. But uh, you know, for us, it was it was real important to kind of create some sets that could last that length and, and keep everybody entertained and you know we we treated each one you know there was a there was a lot of criteria that we wanted to check off you know we wanted to create sets that had a really good flow that felt like almost albums and in, in a sense with each other um you know we, we wanted it, it to be sets that people could sit through for that amount of time and not get bored and you know choose the right you know peaks and valleys for the moods and all that so yeah I, I think i think it went well though yeah and what's your favorite song to perform live from your catalog Ooh, that changes a lot yeah it, re it really depends um some sets it can be something you know brand new because it's something exciting like voice of trespass for instance there's always like a lot of really good energy and it's kind of a different song you know live especially um but sometimes, you know, you'll you'll bust out an old song that you haven't played in a while, and it'll be something that uh, can really excite you again. Um, I don't know. We we I'm trying to think. I mean, even like we were playing more myself to kill on on this last tour. That was, you know, that's one of the first songs we ever wrote. So it like even though that song's not always a blast to play, it, it, it's something special about being up there, uh, like 19 years later still playing that song you know um stuff like that you know because these these sets we're not playing songs that we play every tour you know we're, we're trying to kind of show the audience you know our journey as a band and kind of where we've come from point a to point b so you know you, you get to experience some things um 
on a musical level, like on, on our end that, you know, we normally don't get to do. So, you know, those are the things that, that kind of makes it exciting for us. Yeah. You, you, you get to have a bit more of a personal experience with the, the crowd and sort of share, like you're saying, share your journey, which is really cool. Um, and you get, I guess you're not doing the, the usual, just pump out a song, pump out an album, jump on the road, tour it, and then write a new one on the road as well. So it's probably a good chance to step back for you all to see how far you've come, which is really cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's always good to kind of revisit, you know, things you've done, especially, you know, you kind of get caught up, like you said, in a routine and sometimes you, you forget, you forget things, you, you know, you forget moments of music you've written or, you know, sometimes something that maybe didn't interest you much in the past, there might be some little spark in it that, you know, you can even tweak a little bit to make it, you know, fit more of your aesthetic now. And, you know, the, the, those are the things that are exciting for us, you know, on the, on, in the live setting for sure. Yeah, definitely. And you've had an extensive career so far. What's the key to a successful band relationship? Well, that's tough. <laughs> well, getting along is, is number one. You know, I, I think, you know, we've seen it a million times, you know, bands, I think traditionally don't get along that well. And, and we're very lucky in the sense that we do get along and we work well on the, you know, the music, the musical side of things and in our, our personal lives as well. And I think, you know, that's, that's real important because, you know, if you don't get along with someone, you're not, you're not going to work well together. And, um, and when it comes to writing, we really, we really work as a team and we, there's never, there's more encourage, encouragement rather than kind of like a fight for who, who can do what, you know, we're all, there's a team spirit, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And, yeah, definitely. You know, we, we work really well. And, yeah, I think, I mean, all those things, you know, we this lineup's been, I guess, almost like six, 16 years, seven, 18 years, maybe, something crazy like that. So, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's always little bumps in the road here and there. But, yeah, I mean, we, we really just work well as a team. And you just you kind of learn as you go, just like any group of people. So, yeah, yeah, and you, you mentioned your writing. There's no, process. there's no, ma there's no magic formula, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I guess every band will have its own little ways that it gets around the the personal, you know, personalities yeah. in the group. Yeah. And um, with your writing process, how much has that changed over the years? Well, uh, it's changed a lot. I mean, when I think back to the very beginning, you know, it was mainly just Paul and I sitting around in our apartment with our guitars kind of hashing out riffs back and forth and you know it, it's crazy to even think we'd even have ways to record demos or anything back then it was just you would you would kind of just work on songs and memorize it and slowly get it to a point you're satisfied with and and you know we've slowly just kind of grown with the times you know and, and now we write a lot remotely you know we don't all live next to each other and you know we I don't know. Even I, I still have some of the old demos, even back from like Alaska. You know, recording live jams of the band on a boombox and trying to write <laughs> lyrics to that. And you know, you know, where where now it's like we actually, but before we get in the studio, we have you know, blown, full production, like red. You know, we we know the album before it's gonna before we get in the studio, just because everything's so dense and you know, it, it's allowed us to really. I think that's one of the reasons why our sound has, has changed quite a bit is just because we we can do things we couldn't do in the past. You know, we can we can really spend the time and, and create these, you know, monsters of a song and, and tweak as much as we want. Where in the past it was like you'd have a skeleton and you go in the studio and you only had a certain amount of time. So you kind of got what you got. But now it's like we have all the hard work and all the you know, extra little thing to kind of go through it with a fine tooth comb is it's all done beforehand. And, you know, so I would say a lot of that's changed. And I think individually we all, you know, as, as you grow older with anything, you kind of, you change as, as the way you do things, you learn new things with each, each album you work on or each project you're a part of. And, you know, you, you kind of bring it with you to every, every album. And I don't know, it, it's cool because, when we when we sit down to start writing new material, it, it's kind of neat to see where we all are individually and how we write. And sometimes we'll, you know, there's always we always surprise each other with things we write and like where where we are as people, you know, musically and 
and uh, it's cool to see that journey um because it has changed quite a bit even without like really acknowledging it we it, it naturally just kind of happens so yeah yeah and you guys have toured extensively over your career what's the most important thing for you to take yeah. on the road with you um like like physical things yeah yeah is there something that you can't tour without like is there a pair of headphones that you need or you know a picture of family or anything like that <laughs> well for, for me for me it for me like especially as i've gotten like uh now that our sets are a little more like physically demanding you know on a vocal level i you know i'm very much into a routine and kind of getting you know that's what's important to me it's like it's things that i used to not care about at all like eating well, good sleep, staying clean, you know, those things are really important to like my vocal health and, and kind of making sure that I'm prepared every night for the show. Um, I mean, that's, I don't know. I mean, and luckily we're in a in technology age where I can still, you know, I keep in touch with my son and my wife a lot on the road. And, you know, those are, those are the things that I really need, you know, as a way to still stay connected to my home life. And, um, yeah, just trying to physically be there to um, to play really well every night. Yeah, and you're saying. You're, but as far as material th- material things, uh, there's not. I don't know. I uh, I'm a very neat person, but I don't need like I. I think the older I get, the more minimal I get on the road. Where I used to think I needed all this stuff, it's like, well, I don't, I don't really need a whole lot to, you know, get through every day on the road. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's I guess you learn via. Um... By experience, you, if you got heaps of stuff, you've got to lug it all yeah. around, get it on the bus, get it off the bus, to take it here, take it there. But if you run yeah. middle, it's less less stuff to carry around. Exactly. And um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Now I had something lined up. <laughs> um, what drew you? <laughs> what drew you to this style of music? Like, what got you involved um, in, in prog and, and heavy music? Well, I grew up, I mean, I, I was always a, a big time music fan and I, you know, I think most people get into the music scene they're in through friends. You know, you, you meet a gr- group of friends and you either connect with that or you go to a different group to try and connect with that. Um, and for me growing up, you know, I found, I was really into metal growing up as a, as a young kid. And then I found like a group of people that were in, in the hardcore scene and, and from there, you know, it was a, a real small, tight-knit community. You know, we started bands. And, and I kind of knew from an early age that I really liked writing music. And, um, you know, from there, you just kind of you stick with the group and you see who's serious and who's not. And you kind of go from there. And, you know, I was in a band with Paul, our guitarist, uh, before this band, which we, you know, we toured a little bit here and there. But we had a pretty good following on the East Coast. And so... You know, that that was a good stepping stone for us. And then we started this band. We just kind of, you know, we always took it one day at a time. And, you know, here we are 20 years later. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've always just been drawn to music in general. Um, I, I wouldn't say I was, you know, I knew I wanted to be part of, you know, heavier music. I was always kind of in the metal and, and stuff. But as I've gotten older, it's, you know, as you can probably tell by my musical career that, you know, I really enjoy, you know, trying all types of new things. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I just remember the question I was going to ask you beforehand. It was, um, what's your routine now? Do you, is there a tea that you drink before you go and perform? Is there a vocal warm ups that you do now? Or yeah, um, that's. I mean, it's changed over the years. I used to not do anything, and you know, I think now that I do more singing, and you know, I do more of both extremes, I guess. And yeah, I have a pretty extensive uh, vocal routine, and you know, I I really enjoy quiet time before we play and i don't i don't really go in to the show much uh, if, if i can so like right before we play you know i kind of have my time to myself to stretch and warm up and you know do tea or coffee or whatever i need in that moment but yeah i have a pretty uh strict routine every day oh, that's awesome um i think that's what we've got time for unfortunately but thank you so much tommy i appreciate your time and Good luck with the with the shows coming up, and you know, fingers crossed, Australia is not burning when you we turn up. Hopefully, we're still here, and um, all the best. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully, be, be safe out there. I live in California, so we, we we get a little bit of that as well. But uh, you guys are having it bad right now. Yeah, so yeah. Stay safe out there. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you so much. Take care, and um, yeah, good luck with everything, uh, and uh, can't wait. 
All right, thanks, man. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Take care.